Welcome to the workshop. In today's video, I wanted to uh, put up another in the series of creating scroll saw patterns with Corel Draw. And also, uh, rather than just being a uh, tutorial, I wanted to put up another free pattern. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take you through the steps that I use to create these little mini baskets. Uh, they seem to be very popular with scroll sawlers and everybody seems to like to give them as gifts and stuff. So what I'm going to do today is we're going to create the pattern for this small uh, round basket. Probably won't complete the whole pattern because a lot of it's pretty obvious. The bottom is, you know, just a simple circle and as is the top with a cutout for the handle. The handle might be a little more complex to build, but uh, I'm going to include the uh, the pattern on the website anyway so you can go take a look at that and uh, you should be able to work through that. What I'm going to do today is show you the technique that I use to create this weave pattern in the basket. Um, you'll be able to download the complete plan at www.scrollsawworkshop.blogspot.com and again the, the pattern will be there for you to download. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. May not be able to complete this in uh, one 10 minute video, so we might have to split it up, but uh, let's get started and see how far we get. What we're gonna do is we're gonna attempt to duplicate this pattern right here. This is what we're trying to create. And this is uh, the uh, weave of the basket. And what you'll do is you'll cut four of these and stack them. And as you stack them up, you'll alternate uh, by four and a half degrees each one so that the, the next uh, lobe of the pattern will be right here and then on the top one you go back to there and just back and forth to create the weave. So what we want to do today is create this uh, circular weave. Let me go ahead and zoom out here and I'll show you how I get started on this. There may be an easier way of doing this than I go about it um, but this is the way I do it and it's effective and usually I have to do it once anyway. What I've done is I've created uh, two patterns or two circles. One is a three inch circle and one is a 2.75 inch circle. And these sizes, you know, are up to you. You can make them any size you want. I just like to make these small baskets. Doesn't use a lot of wood and I tend to be able to use scrap wood to make these baskets. And I've created one uh, vertical line. What I'm going to do is select the larger three inch circle, tap the P key to center it, I'm going to select the line and I'm going to tap the P key to center the line inside the circle. Now if we zoom in on this, what we have obviously is the circle um, sliced in half with this line. And what I'm going to do with this line is I'm going to rotate it around this circle to create uh, divisions of the circle in nine degree increments. And you'll see why we do that here in just a minute, but make sure your line is selected. After you have your line selected, bring up your transformation window, which is Arrange, Transform, in this case we're going to do Rotate. Set your angle to 9 degrees, and we're going to click the Apply to Duplicate. And we're going to duplicate that line around this circle through the entire 360 degrees. Once we get that completed, what we're going to do is we're going to create a curve right here and we're going to rotate that curve around this circle also. So the lines are only temporary and they're just there to give us a guideline. I'm going to zoom in on this small segment right here. This is the outside of our circle and the lines we've used to dissect it. To make this next step work, you have to go to the view and make sure your snap to objects is turned on. That's very important for this next step. So make sure that's turned on. Go over to your drawing tools and click on your visor tool. And you'll notice as I move this tool onto the circle, the tool will now snap to that circle when I get close to it. And what we want to do is we want to snap to each one of these intersections. So we're going to go to the first intersection of the line in the circle, click once. We're going to move to the other intersection and click once. And what that did was draw a line between those two intersections. Now we can go up to our shape tool Go back to that line segment we just created, and when we get close to it, it'll give us a little squiggly mark underneath the cursor. We can right-click with the mouse, select to curve. We're going to convert that line segment to a curve. And now when we move our mouse or our cursor close to it to the center, we can click with the left mouse button and drag that line segment up into a curve. And it's arbitrary on how much curve you want, but you know, just Practice with it a little bit, and you'll you'll get you'll get it down. Okay, now we've drawn our first part of the weave pattern. 
I'm going to go ahead and zoom back out again. And what we want to do next is we want to rotate this curve around these different segments of this circle. If I right now started uh, the apply to duplicate, it would actually rotate it around the center of the curve we created. So we had to move the rotation axis to the center of this circle so that the curve will actually rotate around the circle. So if you double click on an object, it'll, you'll give you, it will give you these rotation arrows around the object. And in the center, you'll see a circle with a small dot. And what we want to do is left click on that small circle and drag it to the middle of this circle. And since we have the uh, snap to object turned on, it'll go ahead and snap right to the center of the circle once we get it there. So now we're set up with, uh, we have our small curve selected, we have our rotation axis in the middle. Again, we're going to use the rotation transformation with an angle set to 9 degrees. And now what you'll see is when we hit this apply to duplicate, we're duplicating that small curve between each of these intersections on this circle. And again, we're going to move these all the way around the circle until we complete the entire 360 degrees. Now you may have to watch this video a couple of times to get all these steps down. I know it's a little complex, but uh, it's really not too bad once you realize what you're doing. Okay, now what we can do is we can delete the circle. So select the circle and hit the delete key, and we can delete all of these lines because we no longer need them for this particular part of the pattern. And what we've done now is we've created the outside uh, part of the pattern. And next what we need to do is create the inside, which will basically be the same steps uh, with a couple of exceptions. One exception will be that we will rotate uh, or we will actually create the curve in the opposite direction. And the other is that we will slightly offset the rotation by four and a half degrees so that the next curve will be inside this curve to give it more of a weave pattern. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, select this uh, and group it so we can move them all at the same time because now these are all individual line segments or curves. So go ahead and select everything by dragging your uh, mouse around it and go to the Arrange menu and click Group. And now when we go ahead and zoom out here, you'll see that we have this object all grouped together and we can move this object up into the corner and save it because what we're going to do next is we're going to repeat that process with the smaller circle which will be the inside part of the pattern and I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, finish this video here and we'll do the inside of the pattern on the next video and there's a couple of important steps in uh, creating the inside of the pattern to make everything look right so you might want to come back and check that out. Okay, I'm going to end this video right here, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.